I see that the New Testament is reliable, but I don't see Jesus claiming to be God anywhere in the New Testament. Now keep in mind, this is the biggest sticking point for Muslims, because like I said earlier, Muslims believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Muslims believe that Jesus was the most miraculous man who ever lived. Some Muslims believe he's the only sinless prophet, truly sinless prophet who ever walked this earth. But the moment you say Jesus is God, in a Muslim's eyes, you are committing the worst blasphemy you could ever possibly commit. The Quran says very clearly, chapter four, verse 171, as well as chapter five, verse 72, that if you believe Jesus is God, you will go to hell. There's no arguing with that in the Muslim worldview. Chapter five, verse 116, shows Jesus having a conversation with Allah, and Allah asked Jesus, did you ever tell people to worship you? And he said, by no means. Do I have the right to tell them to do something like that? And so the idea that Jesus is God is blasphemy in Islam and they're trying to defend God when they say there's no way Jesus is God. So the question for me, now that I came to the point of realization that the New Testament was reliable, I said okay fine, but Jesus never claims to be God in that. And now I began to study with a little bit more depth. I began to try to look at things. My friend David first handed me the Gospel of John. He said here, read this. And as I read the Gospel of John, John chapter one, verse one says that Jesus is God. (laughs) Don't have to go too far. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Well, what is the Word? You go down to verse 14, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. I'm looking at these sets of verses, and I'm trying to find a way around this, because again, from childhood, I've been told Jesus couldn't be God, and now that I believe the New Testament's reliable, how could it possibly say this? So the way I defended that was by saying, well, Jesus isn't saying he's God here. This is John, the author. I wanna see Jesus say he's God. Then as you go through the Gospel of John, you see things that Jesus says, like in John chapter eight, verse 58. Some Jews ask him, they say, you're not even 50 years old, yet you claim to have seen Abraham. And Jesus' response is, amen, amen. Before Abraham was born, I am. Now, you know, when you're Muslim, you haven't heard the term I am before. You don't know what that means. But when someone points you to Exodus chapter 3, verse 14, where God tells Moses that his name is Anahu, I am, that now it begins to make sense what Jesus is saying. Someone asks him, you're not even 50 years old. Jesus' response is, I am? I eternally exist even before Abraham was born? Yes, because he's taking the name of the God of Moses. It's pretty clear. And by the way, if there are any Muslims listening and thinking that's not convincing enough, go to John 20, 28, where someone calls Jesus God, and Jesus' response is basically, finally, <laughs> took you long enough. So then my response to that was, well, forget the Gospel of John. It was written too late. That's not reliable. I want to go to the first Gospel. I want to see where it was written early on. Did Jesus claim to be God? Fortunately, I don't have all the time to go into the details here, but I will tell you this. The culmination of Mark's gospel, the very first gospel ever written, is Mark 14, 62. And in this one verse, Jesus makes two, if not three, references to the Old Testament, saying, I am the God of Moses, I am the God of Daniel, I am the God of David. And he does it so clearly that the high priests immediately tear their robes and say, you have heard the blasphemy, what shall we do? And that's the reason why they decided to crucify him. And they would have been right to crucify him if he weren't God. So Jesus claims to be God. Now imagine what this is doing to my mind because I as a Muslim have now come to the conclusion that the New Testament is reliable and in that New Testament I'm seeing Jesus claim to be God. This makes everything I've ever been taught about Islam false because we're supposed to revere Jesus. But here's evidence he claimed to be God. How can I do that? And this cognitive dissonance began to drive me nuts. Up until this point, I was just arguing with my friend David. But now I come to the realization that this investigation may very well determine the course of my life. And so I start praying fervently. And in the middle of these prayers, I go back to my friend David and I say, well, I need to have a case. I need to have good, solid reasoning for what would make Christianity true. Because Christians believe all kinds of things. There's different denominations. Some Christians believe this. Some Christians believe that. What is the thing that would make the core of Christianity true? And I found it in Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Paul says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You didn't know there was going to be a pop quiz involved. (laughs) 
confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Jesus has to be God, he has to die on the cross and then rise from the dead for Christianity to be true.